All right, guys, so in this lesson, I want to talk about the difference between what charges and what elementary charges are. And there's really, really a big difference. So first, let's start with charge. Charge is seen in formulas as the symbol lowercase q, and it has a unit of Coulomb. Now, when an object is charged, that means that the atom... has an excess amount of electrons. So what does it mean to have an, uh, an excess amount of electrons? Well, if we look at the atom, the atom is made of protons, it's made of neutrons, and is made of electrons. And the, they each have their own specific responsibility in the atom. For example, the proton is the atomic number, right? And it also factors into the atomic mass. Where the neutron, that also factors into the atomic mass. And those are the two things that are located in the nucleus. But outside these electrons here, these, are, these can be removed or gained. from the atom, all right? And this remove or gain from an atom is what makes objects become charged. Let me give you an example. So if I had a balloon, and on that balloon there were three protons, or four, and I had four electrons as well. If I have four protons and four electrons, I would have a net charge of zero Coulomb, okay? But now, if I take that balloon and I remove two electrons from it, we can now see that we'd have a plus, a plus, a plus, and a plus, but now I only have two electrons. So when I look, I only have four protons but I have two electrons. So now my net charge is going to be minus two coulombs. And the way that happened was I lost two electrons. All right, now if I had the same balloon with the same four protons, and I had one, two, three, four, and I gained two, so now I have two electrons that are coming in. Now I would have four protons, I would have six electrons, and then I would have a charge of minus two coulombs. I just see I had a little error over here. This would be positive two, because I would have plus four minus two. So that would be a positive two. So now we can see that now I have an excess. Now the, the thing that you really need to focus on here and really, really understand, it's super, super critical, is that protons never move. Never, ever, ever. Okay, so the only thing that we're gonna be moving is electrons. That is the only thing that can move between objects and make an object charged or not charged. But now we hear this uh, term called elementary charges. And what are those? Well, once again, I want to look at the proton, the neutron, and the electron. Now we were told throughout our schooling up until probably physics and maybe maybe in chem depending on your teacher that the charge of a proton was plus one, the charge of a neutron was zero, and the charge of an electron was minus one. Well in actuality guys that is not the case, okay? That is not true. The charge of a proton is listed as plus one E. 
the charge of a neutron is, my, uh, is zero E, and the charge of an electron is minus one E. So what is this E? Okay, this E is the smallest charge that can ever happen. It, it is the sliver. It is the smallest sliver of a total charge that you can possibly have. Smallest charge in nature. All charges are a multiple of E. All right, so E is an amount of charge. That's very important. It's an amount of charge. A very, very, very small amount. All right. And depending on uh, if you're given a reference table or this, you can look this up. This is always the case. E is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th Coulomb. All right. That is the charge of an elementary charge. You can never, ever, ever, ever have a fraction of E. There is no fractions of E allowed. For example, like you can't have one half of an E. That's no good. All E's appear in whole numbers, okay? So you can have one E, two E, three E, et cetera, and things like that. So if we take this information and we go back to the proton, the neutron, and the electron, if I look at the proton, the neutron, and the electron, first and foremost, we do not want to confuse this with E. All right, E and minus E are two different things, and this minus is what causes it to be an electron. So now let's go back and look at the charge of a proton, plus one E. What that's really saying in actuality and what we use in physics is plus one pl times that factor of E. So the actual charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th Coulomb, all right? And zero E, same. So this is gonna be zero times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, and you know that if I do that math, I'll just get zero Coulomb. And the charge of an electron is minus one E, which is minus one times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th Coulomb. So that's minus one point six times 10 to the minus 19th Coulomb. And what this shows here is that the proton and the electron, they have the same charge, same magnitude of charge, but opposite signs. All right, so if we look at some examples of of how this really works, if I said an object has an excess of three electrons, what is the charge on that object? So that object now has gained three electrons. So we know that one electron is one times E, okay? Minus one times E. So if I have three electrons, that would mean that I would find the charge of saying minus three times E, which is equal to minus three times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th Coulomb. And that's where you'd get your answer. Uh, okay. So it's, it's very, very simple to do these things. And again, if you're curious, this is 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19th Coulombs. All right. So this is how we're going to find the charge when I know the amount of electrons. All right. Finding how many E's there are when given a charge will be a lesson for another day. But for right now, this is really all you need to know. So if we go back, you need to understand that a Q, all right, 
is like saying velocity. It's like V in a formula. And Coulomb is like saying meters per second in a formula. So when we see Qs down the road, that's where these are going to come into play. All right, that's when we're going to start to see Q. It's going to be in formulas. And they show up by an excess amount of electrons. You can never, ever, ever move protons. All right, only electrons get moved. Here's how they get moved back and forth to show how I become negatively charged and how I become more positively charged. All right, here's it, what an elementary charge is, guys. Like I said, the smallest thing. If I had a whole elementary charge, this is like one coulomb, all these little slivers in here, these are all E's. So charge is built of E's. Okay. Here's the real charges of a proton, how we find those out. And here's the electron. If you guys have any other questions, just leave them in the comments below. I'll be posting more videos about electrostatics as we move further.